So again, key ideas, horizontal acceleration and vertical acceleration we know for a projectile. And we're going to use a T-table and components. We're going to break things up into horizontal and vertical. So we looked last day at come on, two, launching horizontally from a cliff. I asked you to find the range given the height. I could also ask you to find the height given the range. You would just have three things in this column. You would still find spend most of your time finding time. And once you have time, the question falls apart. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see either in the big review or in the homework, they'll actually give you the time and ask you to find both the range and the height. That also works because if you can put time in both columns, you'll have three things in each column. We said last day, I need three things to find the fourth. Let's build on that. So on your test, you're absolutely going to have horizontally from a cliff, launched horizontally from a cliff. You're also going to have something like this. This is launched from the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? This is a job four? Okay. So it wants me to find the time to the top, the total flight time, and the range. And there's all sorts of other things we can also find, but we'll just start with that. I would have, if they hadn't already, I would have drawn a T-table. They already gave me one. Thank you very much. And I'm going to put my physics no-brainers. Ryan, what's AX? And what's AY? Negative 9.8. All right. This is being launched at an angle above the horizontal of 35 degrees, and it's being launched at 100 meters per second. Did I say angle? We're going to break this up into components. We're going to break this up into VX and VY initial. Why didn't I put an initial on the VX? And I'm going to remind myself, even subconsciously, any chance that I get. How are we going to find the components? We're going to do trig. So that VY, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse, what about that 100 hypotenuse? What about that VX adjacent? Sean, what do you want to find first, VX or VY? Doesn't matter. VY? Uh, that's going to be O and H. You might write Sokotoa at the top of the page, or maybe you've reached the point where now that's internalized and you just see it. Sine. What always goes next to the trig function? The angle, which in this case is 35 degrees, and that's going to be VY initial over 100. So what's VY initial? It's 100 sine 35, and if you wanted to, you could just leave it like that, because that is the exact value. You could just, whenever you see a VY initial type 100 sine 35, or you could evaluate it. And because I'm going to use this, I'm going to carry some extra sig figs. So I'm going to go 100 sine 35. Um, how about 57.3576? If I carry six sig figs, that should guarantee that I'm good to three sig figs at the end. Which trig function is VX going to be? Of course it is. So we're going to have cos 35 equals VX over 100. I notice in my T-chart as I was typing, I put an initial there. I'm just going to write over it with an X to remind myself, actually, that's not just initial. That's final. That's middle. That's anywhere in the question. Uh, it's going to be 100 cos 35 which I could just leave as that, but if you wanted to evaluate it, because some of you get creeped out by not having an actual number, 81.9152, oh, there's a zero. That's a good place to round off to. 81.9152. Have we found the components? Everybody say yes. We're never going to use that 100 again. Don't come back to it. Don't be tempted. Don't use that 100. We've got components now. Darwin, what does A want me to find? The word top, does that suggest horizontal or vertical? I'm going to start thinking vertically. So I'm going to put another A right here in the vertical column. How many things do I have right now in this vertical column, Darwin? 
Not enough, I need three. There must be something else that I know. What do they want me to find? Time to the... Do I know anything at the top? I gotta be fussy. VF is not zero. VYF is zero. VF is actually right at that moment VX for a split second because that's the only component that's left. V. So you know what? I'm going to write that next to A because this is four part A. So I'm going to go VY final equals zero. I'm not going to put it up here because this is unique to the top and I might be somewhere else later on in the question for part B or part C. How many things do I know now? Oh, what do they want me to find? I'm looking for an equation that has A, a V initial, a V final, and a T in it. There is one. You could have your formula sheet out if you really wanted to. I'm just speculating. Could. Could you get the T by itself, please? Yeah, I know it's VF equals VI plus AT, but... And I'm going to remind myself, vertical, vertical, vertical. Common mistakes I see here, kids think, I don't know VY final, and they put the 100 in because they're they know something's got to go there. No, you do know VY final. At the top for a split second, it's zero. So it's going to be zero minus 57.3576 all over negative 9.8. Oh, this is really nice because can you see the top is going to be negative and the bottom already is negative. What's a negative divided by a negative? And time is a scalar. I wanted a positive value. This suggests to me I'm on the right track. Um, I'm naturally lazy. I'm actually going to go 0 minus 100 sine 35 because that's both less typing than typing 57.3576 and more accurate, so it's a double win divided by negative 9.8. How long to get to the top? 5.8528, 5.85 seconds. Is that right? Yes? Cool. Brian, what's B want me to find? Uh, total flight time. Brian, sorry. Brian, what's B want me to find? Total flight time. Total flight time. Hmm. How can I find that? Yeah. Okay, one way to do it, because we're starting on the ground and ending on the ground, and this is the only time that works, this would not work for this question because we're starting up high and ending on the ground. This doesn't work for launching from a cliff, but if you're starting on the ground and ending on the ground, you can find the time to top and double it. So I'm going to make a little note for part B here. You can take answer A times 2. 11.7. And Brian, that's exactly how I would do it if I had done A first. What if I hadn't done A first? That's an or for those of you who can't read my scrolls. I could have done this. VY initial equals 57.3576. AY equals negative 9.8. What's VY final? Not zero. That's after you hit the ground. Huh? And I could have found T that way. And if I hadn't done part A first, that's how I would do it because I'm lazy. Why would I find something and then use that to find something when I can get there in one fell swoop. If you want, and by the way, then it would be this equation here again, Darwin, exactly, except without a zero there. For those of you who are interested, negative 57.3576 minus 57.3576 divided by negative 9.8, and I'll also get 11.7 seconds. Almost bang on, certainly the first six sig figs match. Only here does it get a little weird. And the reason it got a little weird, I could have done it with the, with the sine function. It would have been bang on, but I used the rounded off value. Cool. Cool. Chantel, what did C want me to find? That's range is that distance horizontal. 
Yes? I've scrolled down, so I'm going to make a little note. Uh, my abbreviation for the range is DX, the horizontal displacement. Uh, Ryan, what was AX? Good. Uh, VX was 100 cos 35, whatever the heck that was. I can't remember, but I can just jot that down. I only know two things. Where do I? Which time am I going to use? The 5.85 or the 11.7? You just found half the range, because that's the time to the top. <clears throat> Isn't the range the entire trip? Which of those is the entire trip? By the way, I'm glad you did that. That's the most common irritating mistake on this question as well that shows up on the test. And I'll probably ask you to find the range of a projectile at an angle on the test. Kids find half the range. Nope. Going to use 11.7. Now, I'm looking for an equation that has a D, an A, a V, and a T in it. There is one. Why didn't I bother writing the plus a half AT squared? And I find the kids that do this put a 9.8 in right there. Because oh, there's got to be something. There is. It is a number. It just happens to be the easiest number to do math with. It's nothing. It's zero. Zilch, zip, nada, ixnay, nine. But not nine. So it's going to be 100 cos 35, whatever that was. I wrote it up there, or I'll just type that. Times 11.7. 100 cos 35 times 11.7. And I get 958.86, you know what, 959 meters almost a kilometer. Well, yeah, because 100 meters per second, that's one football field per second. This sucker was moving. Like, this was this was a cannon. This was not someone throwing, for example. Okay. So, you are now able to do question two. That's going to be part of your homework. Question three is a thought problem. Five, we're, four, oh boy. I think I'm going to get to those a bit later. Seven is good. Eight is good. Nine is good. Eleven is good. I skipped ten. The ones I skipped, number ten, and number six, and number five, and number four, that's asking you to find something instead of finding it at the top or at the end, somewhere in the middle. We're going to talk about that a little bit, maybe today, but definitely Monday. Summarizing what we've got so far, when we launch an object into the air, we call it a projectile. We'll ignore air resistance because that makes the math yucky. Projectiles travel in parabolas. If you look at a projectile from the side, that path that it traces out is a parabola. Of course it is because a parabola was an equation that had a squared in it and d equals vit plus a half at. Of course it's a parabola. Oh yeah. It's one of the reasons you look at the parabola so much in Math 11, is it's a lovely graph that has some neat physics applications as well. Although we could deal with that parabolic trajectory using what we know about parabolas and then a little bit of calculus, it's far easier to break it into components. Example 1 says, break the following velocity vector into its vertical and horizontal components. Okay, I see an angle. This is a job for components. So here's Vx, here's Vy initial. Vy initial, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Opposite, 24, hypotenuse. Vx, adjacent. 
VX which trig function? Cos? In fact, I think VX is going to be 24 cos 36. Was that too fast? We know the hypotenuse, and hopefully I've thrown enough trig at you that you spotted the pattern. But I know the hypotenuse is going to be the trig function times the hypotenuse. There's a pattern there. Uh, what the heck is that? I don't know. 24 cos 36, 19.4164. Now, if they just asked me to tell them the component and report the answer, I'd go to three sig figs because my final answer is I always report to three sig figs this year. Um, but if I was going to use it, I'd use the 19.416. I'd probably round off to the four. This is a zero right there. So I'll write 19.4164. Or, because it's almost less typing, I might just type 24 cos 36 whenever I'm in VX. VY initial. Oh yeah, I put the initial there because that's the one that's changing, but VX isn't changing because what's the horizontal acceleration? Yeah. Uh, VY initial is going to end up being 24 sine 36. Uh, 14.1068. Did I round off properly? Yeah, the four there. Things that are true for every projectile. Vx is constant. That means that Ax is zero. Or Ax is zero. That means that Vx is constant. And that means that d equals vit plus a half at squared horizontally just becomes d equals vxt. Uh, this means that if you know the time of flight, you can find the horizontal distance, also called the range. Or if you know the range, you can find the time of flight. The time of flight horizontally is really easy. It's dx over vx. Vertically, Ay is constant, negative 9.8, so Vy is changing. So d equals Vit plus a half At squared stays as it is. Now, up until now, we've always had Vy initial be zero. Oh, no, it was zero when we launched horizontally from a cliff, but it wasn't zero at an angle. But we can safely say, Mateo, that at the top of its arc, V final isn't zero. What's zero? V what final? V y final. Does that mean that the overall velocity is zero? In fact, right at that moment, the overall velocity equals Vx, because that's the only thing that's left. Also, uh, do you have a little square on your screen there too, or not? Yeah. On the letter G? Yeah. Okay. I typed these about three versions of word ago, so I'm going to have to start to retype these. I'm hoping not to, because... There is something on your screen? Yeah. Oh, what is yours? Hmm. Okay, that shouldn't be there. Anyhow, if we start and end at ground level, Vy initial will equal negative Vy final. That can be really, really handy. Also, if you start and end at ground level, the vertical displacement is zero. How high did you start? Zero. How high did you end? Zero. That can be handy sometimes. Finally, if you're starting from a cliff, the ground is below you, and so dy will be negative. You'll either get a negative answer if you're solving for it, or if they give you a height, you'll have to put the negative in front of it when you're doing the calculations. Mr. Duak? What, Misha? You said that projectiles travel in a parabolic path, but I've seen some projectiles that seem to wobble. Put your pencils down and look up. The toughest questions are combining the two we just did. Cliff and angle. 
to find time, because we're going to spend most of our time finding time, it's the most difficult. There are several strategies. One way is to find the time to the top, because at the top, what's the final vertical velocity, Matteo? Then start over with your initial vertical velocity being zero from up here, find the time to the bottom, and add them together. Eh. Meh. Second strategy is to do everything at once. Third strategy, you could find the time to the top, double it, that would give you the time to the bottom, and then your VY initial right here is going to be negative, your VY initial right here, find the time the rest of the way to the bottom and then add. I prefer strategy two. However, strategy two is going to require you to be able to use the quadratic formula. We are going to get a quadratic. Which quadratic? D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, that one. So you're going to end up using the quadratic equation. Or a quadratic solver, if you have one on your calculator, if you've listened to Mr. Dewick. Or, if you're not great on the quadratic equation, I'll show you a workaround. It's lengthier, but it avoids the quadratic equation. I like example one, I like example one, example one is a nice question. We have a cliff at an angle. Did I say angle? This is the job four. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to find the components. I'm going to break this up into VX and VY initial. It looks like our slanty hypotenuse is 50 long. Oh, and I just told you it was the hypotenuse. VY initial, opposite or adjacent. VX. Okay. Which one am I going to find first? It doesn't matter, but if you're lazy, it does. What else did they give me in this question? See the 60? Is that vertical or horizontal? Find VX first, because you're going to use the vertical, and if you find it last, it's stored on your calculator, and yes, I'm that lazy. If they had given me the horizontal, I'd find VY first, then I'd find VX because I'd know that I was going to solve this horizontally, and I'd rather have that VX start on my calculator because it's less typing. You really think this through, Mr. Dick? Yeah. Uh, which trig function is VX going to be? Uh, AH. Cos. So we will have cos 30 equals VX over 50. So VX is going to be... 50 cos 30. I could write the decimal, but why don't I just keep dropping that down? It's less writing. I'm sure it's some number. What will VY initial end up being? 50 sine 30. This one, I think, actually works out dead even. It's 25, double check me, but I'm pretty sure. I know the sine of 30 is 0.5, so it's 0.5 times 50. So here, I'll do that. I did that before even starting. Now, is this a projectile? So what tool am I going to bring out? T-table or T-chart. Yoink, yoink, horizontal, vertical, Ryan, what are my two no-brainers? Horizontal acceleration is? Zero. Vertical acceleration is? Yeah. And I hesitate calling them no-brainers because you got to know your physics to know that, but hopefully we're at the stage now where we understand enough physics that we're, yeah. The rest I'm going to adjust to this question. Uh, it looks like Vx is 50 cos 30, whatever the heck that is. VY initial is 25. Oh, that's 60. Sean, what did you say it was? Vertical or horizontal? Why is this wrong? It is to have to be negative. And unfortunately, um, if you missed the negative when we were launching horizontally from a cliff, you would get an error. 
and your calculator would alert you to it. Here, you might not. You might, but you might not always get an error. So here, you have to catch that. Tim, what's this question asking me to find? Which column do I know three things in? How many things do I know here? How many things do I know here? I'm going to solve this vertically. Looking for an equation that has an A, a VI, a D, and a T in it. There is one. Now I'd like you to do me a favor. We're going to use the rest of the page, but draw a line down the middle of the page. I'm going to show you two methods, and you can choose. The second method avoids the quadratic equation, but it's got a curveball that you have to remember. The first method uses the quadratic equation. It's shorter, but it uses the quadratic equation. What's the equation that we're going to start out with here? What's the equation that has a, v, i, d, and t in it? Does anything cancel here? What kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. Let's plug in our numbers because the quadratic equation was a different kettle of fish. It wasn't get the t by itself. You couldn't. So this is going to be negative 60 equals 25t minus 4.9t squared. I did half of 9.8 in my head. What kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. How did you solve the quadratic? You learned this last year. What was the first thing you did before you did anything else? What did you have to do to the quadratic equation? Make it equal to zero. Now, look up. The easiest way to make this equal to zero would be to plus the 60 over, but now here's one of Mr. Duke's quirks. I have learned after having solved thousands of quadratics in my lifetime, I'm far more likely to make a dumb mistake if the quadratic term is negative, I just am. So I have developed the habit of, whenever possible, plussing the quadratic term to the other side, and then I'll minus the 25t to the other side, because if I can make this positive, I've just learned I make fewer dumb mistakes. So I'm going to write it as this. 4.9t squared minus 25t minus 60 equals 0. Without looking at your formula sheet, without looking at your formula sheet for a candy, can anybody rattle off the quadratic formula by raising your hand? You did the quadratic formula last year. Okay. Mr. Duick wants maximum organization for minimum writing. You may notice a theme. It's how I do things. A, B, C. If you want to, you can write A equals 4.9 on a separate line, and B equals negative 25 on a separate line, and C equals negative 60. And your teacher probably made you do that last year, and that's fine when you're learning, but okay. I tend to write out the quadratic formula once as is, without with just with the variables before plugging in numbers, because it is tricky. Except I'm going to be fussy, but I won't take marks off if you don't do this. Are we solving for x? What variable are we solving for? So I'm going to write t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you put an X there, I'm not going to freak out. But that is my fingernails on the blackboard. Those kind of little glitches. What's B? So what's negative B? 
So I'm going to put b is negative 25. So negative b would be negative negative 25. Write that. Plus or minus. And then what I typically would do is I would do b squared minus 4ac on my calculator right now. So I would get my calculator out. And I would go b squared. If you don't put this negative in brackets, you won't get the correct answer because your calculator won't know that you need to square the negative. Minus 4 times a times c. You get 1801? Now, this one worked out quite cleanly, quite nicely. If it was a yucky decimal, I'd carry 7 or 8 sig figs worth. I really would. Okay? Or I'd try and find a clever way to store it on my calculator if I could. Square root of 1801 all over. What's the denominator say? 2a? I gotta be honest, Emily, I've reached the point I can multiply any number on the planet by 2, even if it's a decimal. So I'll often just do the 2 in my head. But even if that was a decimal, I could double it on my sleep. I think that's fairly clean looking. I think I can type that into my calculator. And we did it. We were organized. We were careful to make sure we didn't make any dumb mistakes. We also didn't have to write this out eight or nine times like you might have done last year. Now, who has the quadratic solver? Uh, what, Cass what, what calculator do you have? Casio? Uh, on the top left corner, second from the top, do you have a calc, a C-A-L-C button? So you have the quadratic solver. Just I'm asking who has the quadratic solver. I'm not asking you know, who has the... Okay. Those of you that have the quadratic solver, pause. Those of you that don't, we need to type this in. Is this a fraction? Show me yours. Nope. Is this a fraction? More than one thing on the top. I'll have to put the top in brackets unless... Ryan has one of the newer Casios that has the double line display and lets you clearly have a top and have a bottom, and good for you if you can do that. But I'm going to go with bracket 25 plus square root of 1801, close off the square root, close off the bracket, divided by 9.8. That's one of the roots. And I'm going to carry extra sig figs because I know I'm going to use this. I'm going to write 6.88145. Then I can just backspace and edit and change the plus sign to a minus sign. And I get a negative time. Can time be negative? Sorry, can time be negative? So I'm going to reject that. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering what that's actually telling you, it's saying if this projectile was going in this direction, it would go 1.77 seconds that way before it hit the ground through the cliff that way. It is actually telling you something kind of cool, but it's not moving that way, so we're not going to freak about it. Alrighty. Those of you that have a solver, I'm going to pause the video. Can go back, but you can't like add another space for editing, or what are you doing there? Okay, I'll look at that later. Was everybody able, if they had the quadratic solver, and wow, I'm impressed that most of you do. Did it work? Yes? Okay, if your quadratic solver didn't work, that's time to hit me up during a flex. There is another way to find time. If you're shaky on the quadratic formula, we could also find VY final. Do I know A? Do I know VI? Do I know D? Then I can find VY final. I can use VY final squared equals VY initial squared plus 2 AD, where both of those are vertical. This will tell me how fast we hit the ground vertically. 
Now, we're hitting the ground at an angle. There's also a horizontal component. I don't care about that right now. It's going to give me the vertical component, how fast we hit the ground vertically. How to get the VY final by itself? How to get rid of a squared? So cross that out and put a big square root there. I've got all the numbers sitting up there. I'm going to go to my calculator in the interest of time. So I'm going to go 25 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 60 square. By the way, that 1801 should look a little bit familiar in the quadratic equation. Oh, we're doing the quadratic kind of in pieces in different orders. Square root. You get 42.438 for by. Why must that be wrong? Because it is wrong. The weakness of this equation, when you take the square root, it assumes, your calculator assumes that you want the positive answer. What's the square root of 9? It's not just 3. What else? Your calculator doesn't bother assuming that you want that. But in this case, we know it's going down. We know when it hits the ground, it's traveling in the negative direction. So the weakness with this method is you'll have to add the negative yourself manually. And that's the most common mistake. 42.4382. Why does that help? Do I know V final? Say yes. Do I know V initial? Do I know A? I can find time using Darwin's equation from earlier in class. I can find time by going VF minus VI over A. And I was able to find time and avoid the quadratic equation. But I had to find something in order to find something that kind of irritates me. So it's going to be negative answer button minus 25 divided by negative 9.8. But you'll also notice, because I've used my answer button, I get exactly the same time value even to the 10th decimal place that you did with your quadratic solvers. We've done the quadratic equation in chunks without noticing. 6.881447. Which method is correct? Yes. I don't care. Those that have the solvers can smugly use the quadratic solver. Oh, Mr. Dalek, aren't I cheating by using my software? So this is what we decided back when there was a provincial exam. We agreed that if the students wrote out the quadratic equation, we had to assume that they had done the rest of it legitimately on their calculators without cheating and using software. Because I can write that down, and I can go all the way to this without writing another step. In fact, I can go right to my roots without writing another step. I'm good on my calculator. So if you're using your solver, write down the quadratic formula, and I'm required to assume that you did the rest on your own, no problem. So I will. And I don't mind if you use technology. I mean, use technology, it's there. Okay. What are we going to spend most of our time finding? Now that we have time, we can find other stuff. We could find the time to top, we could find the range, we could find the impact velocity, but I'm going to pause here because I want to give you, I don't like giving you homework on a long weekend and I gave you some questions from last class.